So let's go ahead and install Logstash. So Logstash is predominantly used for transforming data. So you can send it a log file and then Logstash could alter that log file in such a way that it's easier for you to view uh, things in Kibana, for example. Alternatively, Logstash is also just good as an endpoint. If you make Elasticsearch a public endpoint, you've just got a surface of attack there to get straight to your data. Whereas if you put Logstash in the way and say that you can only connect to Logstash and not Elasticsearch, Logstash doesn't hold all of your data. So it's just a much secure way of doing it. Even if you don't want to do any of the transforming of data, I still recommend that you just put Logstash in the way, just as a secure way to ensure that people can't get to your data. So as with all of the other Elastic products, you can go straight to their website and go to platform, go to Elk Stack Overview, keep scrolling down. Let's look in integrations. And as we scroll down through integrations, we'll see a couple of things here. The Elastic Agent, a web crawler, and Logstash right here. So we can click on Learn More. And then we can click on Download. Again, pick up Operating System and click on Yum. And here are the instructions for installing it. Now, the repository for Logstash is actually the same repository as Kibana. So if you've already installed Kibana and you're installing Logstash on the same machine, so in very small setups, you may do this. Usually you would have Logstash on a dedicated machine, or you may have a group of Logstash servers. Um, same with a, an Elastic uh, search cluster. But in our case, it's all on one server. So I've already got this repository set up. Um, so they go through the instructions of what you need to do. According to them, you just need to install Logstash and then there will be some stashing your first events and things like that. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now, I have, again, got my own instructions on how to do this because once again, we've got the same problem with SHA-1. So their packages are signed using a SHA-1 algorithm, which for Red Hat 9 is not allowed by default out, out of the box. Uh, it should be a 256. Uh, signing algorithm but you can downgrade that to a SHA-1 to install your package so let's go ahead and do that if we scroll through here we're just going to do an install we're going to reload the daemon we're going to enable logstash and then there's some configuration that we can do here so I'm going to skip this bit I've already got the repository um, but I am just going to go and install logstash so here is the server that I have Kibana and Elasticsearch running on. I'm just going to go ahead and install Logstash. And here we go again. We've got the same problem with the GPG key. So we already have this command. Update crypto policies, set the default to SHA-1. And then let's go again and install Logstash. It's already been downloaded, so it should be a little bit quicker. And there we go, it's already installing. So we've passed that bit. And then after this, I'm actually going to go and set that back to default. Just to keep our system secure for signing packages correctly. There we are. So the next thing we need to do is um, do a daemon reload. And then we need to enable. So system ctl daemon reload and then a system ctl enable logstash to make sure that it will run at boot now before we go ahead and start logstash up we need to go to etc logstash and there will be a logstash dot yaml file and in here there's loads and loads of things to have a look at but there's actually not a lot that you need to change in here it's just good to know about it as all of the configuration is actually in a config file so if we actually go in here and go to conf.d there's nothing in here however if we go to log uh, one folder up and copy out the logstash sample configuration 
into conf.d and then have a look at it. We have some default settings here. And most of this is just fine out of the box. So it's just saying that we're going to open up a port 5044 to allow beats data to come in. This is just a name. It could be anything. But this is now set. So we can, we're about to enable port 5044. And then we just need to set the output. So we've got Elasticsearch, so we need to configure that. The index that we want to use. And then a username and password for Elasticsearch. Now we can go and set one up. We can use the Elastic one if we really want to for, for this purpose. Usually I'd recommend going and setting up a user. Um, and I will show you how to do that. So the one thing we need to do is grab the Elasticsearch IP address. Now it is this host. So that's 10.104.2.20. So let's go and put that in here. It's also HTTPS. We're using a secure authentication method. I am going to use the Elastic user just for now. And I'll go and show you in a minute where we change that. And the password is this. I have been having a look at the analytics for the channel and 97, nearly 98% of my viewers that watch my videos have not subscribed. Now, it really does help the channel out subscribing to my channel. Um, it helps me um, gain more traction um, and ultimately I'm able to put out much better videos. Please, would you do me a favor and if you gain any value or learn anything from any of the videos that I teach, really appreciate that you would subscribe. Thank you. And now I can do system CTL start logstash. And that should be all we need. If we go and have a look, bar log, log stash star dot log. Oh, what we're going here? We've got no logs yet. Nope. Okay, fine. We can go into var log messages. Interesting. So this is a brand new server, and our syslog is not installed, so we don't even have var log messages. So let me go quickly and install our syslog. and then enable our syslog so it runs at boot and then let's go and start it and then we should restart logstash back And what we'll notice, or what you should still see, is that we've still got a problem with connecting to Logstash. And the problem will be the self-signed SSL key. So let's give it a minute, but we should see in here in a minute. Start in Logstash. And put info here. Attempting to resurrect connection to dead EC ES instance, and that is because Elasticsearch is unreachable. And the reason it's unreachable is because of an SSL error. In fact, we can see it here. Look, unable to find valid certificate. So what we need to do, the last thing we need to do is in here, after password, we need to do SSL certificate verification. False. Now in this demonstration, I'm not going to go into it. You can set up proper, you know, signed certificates and things like that. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I just want to kind of show you everything in action. So I'm just going to restart Logstash to take that configuration into account. And then I'm going to tail the messages file again. And we should start to see that Logstash can now connect to Elasticsearch. And here we are. So we can see here that we've got data streams set up. You can see here that it's got a default mapping table. 
can see here it's installing the Elasticsearch template for ECS Logstash. So we are confident now that Logstash is connected to Elasticsearch. And then finally, we have two things to do. Number one, we need to set the firewall. And this is the command we're going to need. Firewall CMD, public zone, we want it permanent and we want to add 5044. So let's go ahead and do that. And just to confirm, the reason we're using 5044 is because we've set that here. And now let's just reload the firewall. And then let's go, then let's go back over to Elasticsearch. Now in the management area of Elasticsearch, we scroll down to users. We've got all the different users. And one of them is the Logstash system user. Now we can actually use the Logstash system user, which was created when Logstash was able to connect to Elasticsearch. We can go and change the password. Let's change it to Logstash1, Logstash1. So this is the password that we're going to use. So it's Logstash underscore system with Logstash1. That password has been changed. Now over here in here, we can now stop using this super user and do log stash system. Set the password. And again, restart log stash. So we've now secured log stash by not using a super user, but using the log stash system user to be able to lock down permissions and if we look in the log files and give it a moment, we should still see that Logstash is able to connect to Elasticsearch. And here we go. Look, we can still see that it's restored the connection and it's now using the Logstash system user. So this is a lot more secure and just allows us to protect and look after that Elastic super user. And that concludes the Logstash configuration. So we can now see Logstash is connected to Elasticsearch. We can now send data to Elasticsearch via Logstash, which is a much more secure method. And in my next video, that's exactly what I'll be demonstrating.